Uh, continuing with our uh, dig game program, uh, we're going to fill in uh, some portions of this that we have yet to complete. Uh, so the next thing that I want to do is I want to do this, uh, find a coin or find a gem or find nothing uh, situation here. So what we're going to do is, again, because this we're focusing on functions, although this is probably good programming anyway, uh, we're going to use a function in order to do this. So we are going to have our amount of money possibly grow by, well, nothing, or one, or some random number. So the way I'm going to write this is money is going to get the value of money plus the result of a find function. So this find function is going to determine whether the user gets one, a bunch, or nothing in terms of how much money they get. So we'll go up. Again, I like to keep my, uh, my functions in order, so you're probably going to want to do this underneath the shovel break. Um, so here, uh, we're going to have this one. Of course, it's got to, it's got to act like an integer an int because we are using it uh, in the uh, in an, uh, a calculation here. So this find is going to have to act like an integer uh, adding on either 0, 1, or x to money. So this is find. Now we did not pass it any arguments so we do not need to set up any parameters to catch them. Uh, so we've got our int find here, and now one thing that we're going to need is we'll have to determine how much uh, an individual gem is worth if they actually find one. Uh, so you do need a, another variable here for uh, gem worth. So now we'll do this based on probability. So we'll say that there's about a 10% chance of getting a gem. So we'll use something very much like our shovel break function. So if random num, so if randnum uh, is larger than or equal to 90, then uh, we'll do the work to add on a gem. So what I want to do is this is how I want to calculate gem worth. So gem worth is going to get the value of, now what I would love is for a random number, but I don't want from one to 100. I don't want to give them 100 coins for this. I want to be able to do something like this, like three comma seven, and then have that gem be worth somewhere from three to seven coins. So where we're going to do this, uh, usually if it's something relating to the function, I'll put it like right above, but I want to put all the random number functions together. So I'll move up just a little bit here and put it under the other random number function. So int randnum. And for this, uh, we're going to get uh, int x comma y. Uh, oops, sorry, int y. Okay. Uh, now I want this to be Say if we put three comma seven, I want a random number from three to seven. But if I put seven comma three, I also want a random number from three to seven. Uh, so the way that we're going to uh, incorporate that here is uh, by putting in an if statement. So if, uh, say, x is larger than y, what I want to do is I want to return uh, the result of this function. So random modulus. So the way we do this, it's high minus low. We know x is larger. So high minus low plus 1 plus the low number. Uh, and then otherwise, I want to return uh, the opposite. So random uh, modulus y minus x plus 1 plus x. There we go. Uh, so that uh, this is a really actually quite useful function. And you can put this in your other programs because this lets you do the very, very pleasant random number of just like random num, and then you put the range, and then you're done. 
Uh, so this is something that is probably really useful to put in your other programs as well if you're doing random numbers. Because look at that. I know just by looking at it, I don't have to do any math, that this is a random number from 3 to 7. Uh, okay. So now the next thing that I'm going to do is I will say, because this is the scenario where we got that 10%, um, that what we're going to do is we are going to see out the result of that. So see out, uh, you found a gem worth, and then this is where I'm going to put the gem gems worth. So gem worth, and then an exclamation point, and then end up. Uh, so we say how much the gem is worth, and then we are going to return that value. So return gem worth. Okay, so that's scenario one. Now, um, if it is not within that 10%, I want to give it another chance, uh, and now it might get uh, a coin. So else if... We'll use the same thing, so random num, but now I want to make this uh, like a pretty frequent occurrence. Uh, so let's say 50%. So as long as that random number from 1 to 100 is larger than or equal to 50%, uh, I'm going to see out you found a coin. And then we're going to return 1. And then otherwise, this is going to be a C out, uh, you found nothing. Uh, and L, and in this case, we're going to return zero. Now, it's very important when you're doing a function with a return statement that you end off your if-else ladder with an else. So there is no way to get out of this if-else ladder without a return. If you have if, else, if, else, if, the computer will not necessarily trust you that it can guaranteed always have a return, and it'll usually have you put something underneath. But because I end on an else, return zero here uh, is totally fine. Okay. So this is my find function. Uh, I can do a little test here just to see how it's going. Now again, I'm going to uh, max out at uh, five days, uh, but it says found nothing, found nothing, found nothing, found a coin. So that's some pretty bad luck on the uh, coin and gem finding. Uh, here we've got four coins. I would love to see a gem show up possibly uh, just to show that. Uh, we've got a lot of shovel breaking on that run. Now it's only 10% so like I, sh I should have seen one by now. Uh, wow this is this is terrible luck. These are going to be uh, you know some some bad runs of this program. There we go. Okay so you found a gem worth three. So you can see that that doesn't happen all that frequently. So typically, you're going to get one or zero. But otherwise, actually, that was a pretty bad gem, too. Uh, you'll get a number between uh, from three to seven. OK, let's take a look at our main program and see what components we need to fix. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to display the inventory uh, that the user has. So uh, in this case, uh, we're going to write inventory and then we need to send it all of the uh, variables that should be in the inventory. Uh, so in this case uh, we need to send it the amount of shovels, the amount of sandwiches, and the amount of money. Okay now we'll scroll up to the top again uh, I'm going to put this one just above into main. Uh, if you're getting lost while you're following along with this, you can take a look at the line number and that may be a good guide for you. Uh, so for inventory though, let's be a void function uh, because it doesn't return anything. So void 
inventory, uh, and then we need to create a parameter to receive those values. I'm going to abbreviate them slightly, so int shove for shovel, int sand for sandwich, and int money for the amount of money. And then here I'm going to see out, start with an end L, the word inventory, The next line uh, will display the amount of shovels, so shovels. Uh, see out sandwiches. Tell the user how many sandwiches they have. Uh, see out coins. This is the amount of money they have. And uh, there we have it. So now if I run this, just again to test it out, uh, you can kind of see how the pattern is going to be establishing itself a little bit. Uh, so for example, uh, going from day three, where you've got two shovels, two sandwiches, and 12 coins, it says you found a coin and ate a sandwich. You have two shovels, one sandwich, and 13 coins. Uh, so make sure that it's counting up properly before you move on to the next step.